Get ready, America, for this is the best of Destination Small Town, a Quack TV production featuring the shows that have taken Sweet Swine County by storm. The reality hit, The Real Housewives of Sweet Swine County, Sweet Swine's favorite music show, Backstage at the Commune, the tastefully done cooking segment, Cooking It Up with Betty, the always zany soap opera, As the Corn Grows, and of course, the wildly popular talk shows that share what's happening inside and outside Sweet Swine County. Which shows will you be seeing today? Stay tuned and find out right after the break. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County maps and plat books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of How to Be Jealous of Yourself by Prairie Ann. Born with a total package and surrounded by jealousy her entire life, Prairie Ann shares her personal rise to the top as Sweet Swine's hometown sweetheart. Prairie Ann has thrown off the yoke of pure envy, theirs, not hers, and has put her vast wealth of knowledge in this tell-all book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. The lifestyles led in the small towns and counties of the Midwest are like no other. But we seldom hear about the points of interest and businesses located in these towns. Well, there's one TV station that's made it their mission to make sure the stories of the small towns of the Midwest are told, Cluck TV. That's right, Cluck TV, located in the neighboring county of Sweet Swine. See all the towns that are covered on KLUKTV.com. to another exciting episode of As the Corn Grows! Today, we join Officer Dave as he interrogates Mrs. Swanson regarding the birthday party shooting at the Moonlight Cabaret. You better have a good explanation as to why you got me down here, Officer Dave. Just relax, Miss Swanson. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> Not likely. What was that, Miss Swanson? Whatever. Did you find the man who shot my son? Well, we don't know that it was a man. Oh, well, let me rephrase that. Do you have a suspect in custody? No. Am I a suspect? Well, everyone's a suspect, Miss Swanson. And I'll be asking the questions if you don't mind. Well, anything that'll get this going. I have my son in the hospital, you know. I'll be brief. A witness has come forward saying that you had a heated argument with John Olson just prior to the incident. What? An argument? The witness said she overheard Cousin John tell you about his new line of frozen foods, Betty's best frozen chicken entrees, and that you became very upset and threatened to, to have past associates take him out behind the woodshed. He was sassing me, and I was upset. So you didn't contact your CIA associates? No, I did not. Hmm. Where were you at the time of the shooting? Well, I was by myself, sitting near the buffet table. The buffet table? Very interesting. Forensics has confirmed that that's right directly in line with the trajectory of shots that were fired at Cousin John. Well, I didn't shoot my son. But you do admit that you were trained to fire a weapon. I was. And according to the agency, you were a crack shot. Maybe. So let's review. You had heated words with Mr. Olson. You're a crack shot with a gun, and you're sitting directly in line of the fire the night of the shooting. 
Yes, yes. I, I know. I know. I, I, right I remember exactly. I remember exactly what I said to you that day. I said, I said to you, do not worry. You will not have to go to prison with all that money. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. You are in prison. But do you have the money? No. No. You don't have the money. So, I did my job. Okay. Look, I've got someone here. I've got to get. I've got to go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. Well, okay. One quick question. One quick question. Okay. Is it legal for your cellmate to keep winking at you? Look, uh, I'm going to do some research on that. Let me get back with you. Oh, oh Ed, sorry, I hurried sorry. down as soon as you called. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're going to write me the check or you're going to cut me the check? Well, you know, I, Is that what you I, called I seem me to have about? misplaced my checkbook. But, oh, so I'm not writing a check, but I got checkbook? some. I'm going to ask you a few about? questions. That's why I thought you yeah. called. Yeah, no, why I'm else ask would you, you want me questions. to come down I want to ask you this. I've done some research on Cousin John. Research. And Cousin John and you the know, online magazine, the Sweet Swine Scoop. Well, you don't need to do any research on that. The, the Sweet Swine Scoop has been my baby. It's always been my baby. I did all the research. I got all the advertisers. I wrote all the articles. It's always been mine. But you know what, Ed? That is yesterday's business. My yeah. magazine is going to kick his butt in six months. So just yeah, write you, the you check. Come on, Eddie. Maybe we don't want to be just kicking any, anything. You know, Maybe we <laughs> want to be kind of cautious about this whole thing. What are you talking thing. about? Did, let me ask you a few questions. Did you buy what that you domain name? Well, of course Sweet I bought the domain scoop. name. You bought that. I did. And Cousin John said that he was going to reimburse me. And it's been three years and I haven't seen a dime. But you did pay for the Sweet Swine I did. Scoop I did. domain fees. You I paid, paid for that. I paid for it with my credit card. Okay. Okay. Well, what about what about that little block in the bottom where you put your oh, name in that block? ownership block? But it says owner of. I used, my, name's I used my credit card and it said Prairie Ann Smakovich and, and it had my address. Okay. On all, right. all the information. I filled all right. it all out. Okay. Let me let me just make sure that I understand this. So you okay, actually on, paid the, the fees. Just right. Yes, I paid and, the fees. And, and you put your blood in me. In yes, that I reimbursed me and I put my name, Prairie Can you light me up My here, last please? name, can you my birth date. Yeah. Oh, Ed, come on. Uh, I don't want to savor this moment. Ugh. I want to bask in the warmth. Bask you know, in what? In the warmth. This, this, you know what? Is, if you I'm, write me you know, that check, very I can few be times in my too. career. Just write me a little check there. Maybe too much, few times Ed, in my I've career. I've been dreaming about this online magazine. I just You'll need that check. You'll be dreaming about something else later, so don't worry. This is going to be fantastic. Oh, you're going to give me more than twenty-five thousand? Yeah. No, what I'm going to tell you is that you don't need more? to start I don't. online advertising. What are you talking about? Advertising. It's been my dream. I think about it morning, noon, and night. Yeah, but of all intents and purposes, it appears that you have owned and still do own sweet swine scoop <gasps> giddy up oh oh johnny wake up i i know you can hear me johnny little john and i need you so much please johnny wake up wake up, wake up. listen minnie i'm telling you we got to get in on the ground floor and i'm telling you john crampton but this is just another one of your get-rich-quick schemes. But the salesman, he was really specific. First 500 people that come in with $10,000 are going to get a 1,000% return on their money and a trip on the first commercial flight to the moon. No, no, that money is earmarked for a used Buick to replace that rattle trap we've been driving around in for five years. To the moon, Minnie! To the moon! I don't care if they're flying you to Disneyland, John. Listen, Minnie, with $100,000 you can buy a, a brand new car. Heck, you can buy a whole fleet if you want. Hey there! I come over to borrow a cup of sugar. Tracy's gonna make me some cookies. Listen, Earl, I'm glad you stopped by. I need a second opinion. What's up? Sure. Okay, Earl. I've been in contact with a guy that knows a guy that's developing the first commercial flight to the moon. To the moon? To the moon. And the first 500 investors that come in with $10,000, he's guaranteeing them a 1,000% return and a trip on that first flight. So you're going to fly to the moon, John? Yeah. And old Minnie here, she wants to spend the money on a used Buick. Well, silly me if I want to be able to drive to the grocery store. To the moon, Minnie. To the moon. A fella'd be crazy not to get in on the ground floor. Wouldn't you say so, Earl? Well, maybe. When's the flight going to be, John? Uh, I, I don't know. It's February or something like that. Well, that's no good. That's when our bowling tournament's going to go to the National. Well, 
then I'll just take the next flight. Earl, you're missing the big picture. It's a $100,000 return and a flight to the moon. John, you've always been a little spacey, but this is ridiculous. Oh, again with the wisecracks, Minnie? Well, that's going to have to be a pretty big ship, isn't it, John? Why do you say that? Well, didn't you say that the first 500 investors were all guaranteed a seat on the first flight? Yeah, so? Well, then it's going to have to hold 500 people. <laughs> and if they're all John size. Oh, again with the wisecracks, Minnie? Do you think they can really build a ship like that for $5 million? Well, they said they can. I mean, they're rocket scientists after all. Hmm. Let's do some math. 500 investors, $100,000 a piece is not, not, is not, not. Carry the one. Would you that's, just tell me what you're trying to figure out? Well, 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 John, that's $50 million. And? John, did that salesman sell you some magic beans, too? Why are you two always trying to squash my dreams? Norton, get out of here! Oh, Johnny, wake up! Oh, Johnny, I'm here. Johnny, I'll always be here. Please come back to me, Johnny. Well, I guess it's true. We don't dream in color. Will Cousin John ever come out of his coma? And will Miss Minnie's love be strong enough to weather the dark days ahead? Guess we'll find out after the break. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of One Duck, One Ventriloquist, An Autobiography by Lawyer Ed. Talented, driven, Hungry for fortune and fame, the story of a man and his wooden duck against the world. The High Horse Herald says, This guy quacks me up. What a character, and the lawyer's funny too. The New Pork Periodical says, Best two dollars I ever spent on a book. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. Oh, Abby Appetite here, head reporter for the What's Cooking team, making a list for my reporters to do stories on about the restaurants, cafes, diners, supper clubs, and bakeries in the small towns of the Midwest. You can see them all on clucktv.com. Hey, let's pick one out and go there together. Remember, you'll be traveling with an appetite. Abby Appetite. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows. Now, we join Jet Setting Ronnie as he confronts Norma over at Edie's Cafe. Well, Ronnie P. Silage, when did you get back in town? Well, two days ago, a couple days ago. Well, you missed all the excitement. Oh, well, how's that? Cousin John, he was shot at his own birthday party last week. <laughs> so I heard, so I heard. Officer Dave, he's interviewing everybody in town. Oh, don't I know. Is something wrong, Ronnie? Oh. Is something wrong, Ronnie? Well, now, don't play dumb with me, sister. Well, I don't like the tone of your voice. And I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me spell it out. Did you or did you not tell Officer Dave that you saw me lurking in the shadows at Cousin John's birthday party? Well, I might have said something in passing. I was in Europe. Europe, Ronnie? Really? Were you really in Europe? Yes, I really was, Miss Nosy. I was in Europe. And because of you now, Officer Dave thinks I'm a chief suspect in the birthday shooting case. Well, I saw what I saw, Ronnie. So, Miss Katie... Tell me about the night of the shooting. What about the night of the shooting? Well, a witness has come forward and stating, and I quote, Katie Olson was desperate to find Cousin John. She had a small red bag, and she was overheard telling Miss Swanson that it was something Cousin John had been asking for for a long time. Do you care to explain? 
Well, there's nothing to explain. It was Cousin John's birthday and I brought him a gift. Did you give it to him? Well, no. What was the gift? The gift? I, 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 I don't remember. Hmm. Well, let's move on, shall we? My witness heard you talking to Sergio Furlioni. She said you seemed highly agitated and at one point stated, and I quote, Maybe we should rethink this. To which Mr. Furlioni replied, The wheels are in motion. Just sit back and enjoy your rise to power. Well, I can explain that. Sergio Ferleone and I have been friends for a long time, and he was wanting to make a big investment with money of mine, and I was getting cold feet. I see. Where were you sitting at the time of the shooting? Sitting? Why well, is it one of the back tables? So you're sitting at the table mm -hmm. when the shots were fired and the lights went out. That's correct. Just one more thing, Miss Katie. How do you explain that nobody saw you after the lights came back on? and that you were missing when me and Miss Bonnie frisked everybody. Well, there you are, Ronnie P. Silage. I've been chasing you all over town. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were avoiding me. Oh, for heaven's sakes, don't you have a son in the hospital to annoy? Well, yes, I do thank you very much, but he's in a coma. And there's just so many hours I can watch someone sleep. <laughs> oh, there, there goes your Mother of the Year award, I gotta say. Now, I just got back from being grilled by Officer Dave about the shooting at Cousin John's birthday party. Well, why was Officer Dave grilling you? Well, uh, that nosy normal over there. You know, she told him that she thought she saw me lurking in the shadows at Cousin John's birthday. Were you? Of course I wasn't. Well, she's wrong as usual. You know I was in Europe. Well, um, talking about Europe, how many orders did you get? Well, not as many as I had hoped for. As many? A few, a few, a few. A few. Okay, done. Not a zip, okay? Does that make you happy? No, it doesn't make me happy. What happened? Well, okay, okay, okay. So, the Minister of Food in France, okay, uh, didn't like the packaging, okay? The British minister just didn't think it worked for his market, okay? And... The Rome food minister didn't go for the compressed noodle idea. Now, I thought we had something going in Spain, but the Spain minister of the noodle board, after a while, just decided it didn't have the heat factor. <gasps> so, now what happens? I guess we dissolve the partnership. Yep. Yep. Rain in our losses and... Move on! You mean we're bankrupt? Give it to me straight, Doc. I can take it. I'm sorry, Mr. Plow. But the test results came back negative. Negative? Negative? Oh my god, it's negative. What am I gonna do? I knew as soon as Calm I became successful, down. I'd be stricken down right here Calm in Sweet down. Swine County by a magic bullet. Calm. Please tell my mother I love her. Please, please. Calm down. Oh my God. I started to tell you that I double-checked all of the data, and there just doesn't seem to be any doubt. You're as healthy as a horse. A horse? I'm, I'm turning into a heart? No, I'm as healthy as a horse? You're healthy as a horse. But what about the bullet? The, right here, I felt it. That was cast off from Cousin John's hit. The, the blood. blood. The, the blood, blood was his. Oh, oh, excuse me. I, I could come back later. No, Miss Mead. I'm glad that you're here. There's been some new developments. New new developments? Oh uh, yes, Mr. Olson has been in a coma I, for over 24 hours now. Well, well, when is he going to come out of it, Doc? Well, he started to respond to external stimulus. Well, that's a good sign, isn't it, Doctor? Yes, that's a very good sign. But a man with this type of injury should have regained consciousness a long time ago. Well, what are you trying to say, Doctor? Well, we're hoping for the best, but I would be remiss if we did not prepare you for the worst. Oh, Dr. Gus, you're not saying... Uh-oh.
that doesn't sound good. Will Dr. Gus find a way to wake Cousin John up from his coma? Will Minnie find the words to break the news to Little John? And will Elmer be traumatized by his brush with death? Guess we'll find out after the break! Get ready, because now you can watch a full of fun daytime talk show that shares the latest and greatest news about the people, places, and events found all over our story country. The Women of Sweet Swine County, hosted by three sassy ladies that tell small town stories with big town attitude. Now, on this station and the web. This program has been made possible by The Daily Boar. This sometimes daily newspaper reports the news the residents of Sweet Swine County want to know. Also now featured online at SweetSwineScoop.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows. Now we join Katie as she meets with Prairie Ann to try to unwind after a very stress-filled week. Oh, Katie, honey, are you okay? You sounded so upset on the phone. I couldn't believe it. Well, did I really? You did. Let me tell you what happened this week. What happened? Okay, first there was the hail of bullets at Cousin John's birthday party. I know. That was wild, wasn't it? It was. And now I'm on Officer Dave's top ten list. Seriously? Yes. And you know what else? I heard that... Um, Clem Johnson and, and B.T. Plow and even Ronnie Silage. Officer Dave is calling them all in to be to be interrogated. Ronnie Silage? Well, I don't yes, understand Ronnie how that Silage. can be because he called me, I think it was the morning after the party. He was from, he was calling from Spain. And you know what I heard? What? Well, I was in Edie's and Nosy Norma told me that, that that Ronnie has never left the country, that he's been holed up in another county, just waiting to shoot Cousin John. But you know, honey, let's let's talk about something light. Let's just lighten the whole mood up here. How's Sergio? How's he doing? Sergio? Yes. And I. Our history. He slithered back into my life. He took me for my last $5,000, yes, and he wanted me to invest it. It was a surefire, can't miss thing. Mm-hmm. So, what did you, what did you invest it in? Sergio betted on a horse. A horse. A horse. Mm-hmm. Yep. And his surefire, can't miss thing came up a little short. And lost everything. Gone. Lost everything. Yes, over and out. And tell you what, I'm done with Sergio Ferleone, and I am done with men. That's it. Over. Oh, honey, talk about being done with men. You know, that Garrett uh, and my and my boyfriend-stealing sister. You know what, Prairie Ann? We should form a club. Good idea. Of strong women who yes. are ready to take on yes. and take over the world. Yes. Yes. And you know what I think we should call what it? What should we call it? The Giddy Up Girls Club. Oh, I love it, Katie, and we can put it in my magazine, my new magazine. Perfect. Yes. Madam President. Madam Vice President. <laughs> Giddy <Get> up! <laughs> so, Ms. Plow, it's come to my attention that you've been stalking J.R. Olson for the past several months. Aren't you going to read me my rights? You're not under arrest. We just need to have you answer a few questions. My investigation of Mr. Olson's phone records indicate that you called him over 70 times in the past six months. I ain't saying nothing. If you cooperate, I can put in a good word with the prosecutor for you. Prosecutor? I thought you said I wasn't under arrest. Not at this time. But if we can prove you've been stalking Cousin John, he may want to press charges. You can't prove nothing, copper. Well, I have a transcript of a conversation between you and Cousin John recorded by the phone company on October 5th of 2010. It reads as follows. It's like I said, John Robert. I'm watching over you. Life is unpredictable. You just never know what might happen. That doesn't mean nothing. That's just a neighborly chat between friends. I have an eyewitness who puts you at the scene of the crime, acting very suspiciously. I bet that's that nosy Norma from Edie's restaurant. I ain't saying another thing. Miss Plow, do you or do you not own a 9mm handgun just like the one used to shoot John Robert Olson? Hello? 
Well, hello there, Big Louie. Uh, Daniel Beauregard Lee here with some very good news for you. No more excuses, Lee. I can have my boys on the airplane in 15 minutes. Louie, Bobby, relax. Have the boys relax. I have your money right here in my hot little hands. Well, now that is good news. I was beginning to think I was going to have to make an example out of you, Mr. Lee. I don't even want to know who you had to kill to get that 200000 Oh, kill? Oh, my, no. I inherited this from a, uh, an elderly relative. I just had to wait for the legal eagles to do their thing so they could hand it over to me. Well, and now you can hand it over to me. How soon can you get to Chicago? I'll be in Chicago tomorrow afternoon. Uh, have your man meet me at the Astoria Hotel, uh, room 1203 at, say, 6 p.m. No, i tell you what. I'd rather if you came to my house at 6498 St. James Avenue. If everything is as you say, we can complete our little money transaction and also discuss a little job I might have for you. Oh, all right. Louis, uh, what type of job might that be? Well, as it happens, I need some eyes and ears in Sweet Swan County. My young fiancé is vacationing there, and I don't want anything to happen to her, if you know what I mean. Uh, what would the young girl's name be? Danielle D'Angelo. Well, I, I, I do not believe I have seen her around. Well, she's an exotic dancer. She might be using her stage name. And what might that be? Destiny. Destiny Disaster. Melvin, are you sure you know how to run that camcorder? Are you capturing audio? Alright, let's go. Silage? Ronnie P. Silage. This is Officer Dave. I've got a search warrant to search your cabin. Looks like he stepped out, Melvin. Let's see what we've got here. Looks like somebody's definitely been staying here. Holy Toledo, look at this shrine of Prairie Am. Yeah, somebody's been sleeping right here. No, get a look at this. Maps of Europe. What's this? A knife. Melvin, a knife. Oh, it's a, it's a kitchen knife. Hold on, Melvin. Take a look at this. A gun. We've definitely got evidence now. Let's see. Hold on, Melvin. Go back to those pictures one more time. Look at this. A picture of Cousin John with a target. I think we got him, Melvin. Oh, me thinks the jig is up for the hot dish on a stick, Bogle. Will Officer Dave be issuing an arrest warrant for Ronnie P. Silage? Find out next time on As the Corn Grows! Get ready for a website like no other. A website where you will find stories done by reporters, tourists, and celebrities from Sweet Swine County. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County. With nothing happening in their county, they decided to do some stories about the businesses and points of interest located in their neighboring towns and counties. Take a unique look at life inside the small towns of the Midwest by visiting DestinationSmallTown.com. Who are these people and what are they doing? Well, they're talk show hosts, tourists, celebrities, and reporters from your neighboring county of Sweet Swine. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County, and they're sharing what they've learned about the businesses and points of interest in the small towns of the Midwest. Learn all that they learned on DestinationSmallTown.com. <laughs>